Hey, welcome to the Bobby Eaton Show, where we tell our stories our way. Now, hey, we got a new live stream going on. It is KBOB899.com. Again, that is KBOB899.com. Wow, the history of my work basically starts with my grandfather's legacy that he left us here. Uh, this front porch and every place we're sitting right here, this house is over 100 years old. Grandpa Joe Eaton uh, made it, took care of his family, and uh, my dad worked in his barber shop that he had right over here on the side of the uh, the house right here. We have a family barber shop over here. Is, this is where the civil rights movement started, right there. You know, right inside here, the barber Eaton barber shop. Joe Eaton and Sons, my dad and uh, Bobby Eaton uh, Senior and Jerry Eaton Senior. So Grandpa built the building and he built the house and uh, he was here during the 1921 massacre. He was right here. And uh, throughout his endeavors and his, his doings, it, we've been able to pass it down. You know, he passed it down to his sons and my dad, Bobby Eaton Sr. Uh, got it. And so now he's passed it on to me. And so we are keeping it in the family. What's that? Shackles. Slave shackles. Slaves. These are the shackles that slaves, this was on a slave at one time. You know, right here. And when he would run, the bell would ring and the master would, could hear it. So why do you keep that here? To be a constant reminder. To be a constant reminder of where we come from and to show young people who've never seen anything like this, to show them exactly what it was, because it's a reality. Our ancestors and elders, that's why we're standing on the shoulders of these people. My project is, uh, we plan on having a festival for the Greenwood Arts Project, and uh, that includes all entertainers, poets, everybody. We're gonna have a big uh, concert and we're going to be uh, the primary uh, media source for the Greenwood Art Project with the radio station that we have here. We'll cover everything from artistry to talk, you name it, we're going to cover it. I feel like in, the, in these days and time that you have artistry and stuff that takes place, but it's not always recognized on the level that it should be. When did I find out about the Black Wall Street Massacre? Well, when the massacre took place back in 1921 and Greenwood was destroyed, right? It was on hush hush. Nobody talked about it. Nobody said anything about it. So I grew up in the community as a child, really not knowing much about it at all. So it wasn't talked about. And the reason I think it wasn't talked about is because some of our elders didn't want it to reoccur again out of fear. So they didn't talk about it. I was uh, up in age when I found out about this horrific act that took place on Black Wall Street. I had to be about in late teens, something like that, when I found out about it. And I was one of the few that even knew about it in our community. The rest, a lot of us in our community didn't know anything about what took place right down there on Black Wall Street. This act that took place down on Black Wall Street was before 
uh, Hiroshima before 9-11. It's the first bombing in the United States of America took place right down on Greenwood, 1921. The first. And they kept it so hush-hush up under. It's America's best kept secret. But it's not a secret anymore because it's coming, you know, to life now. So um, anything that we can do to preserve the history, to let people know about the history, is what we should be doing. It should be about our business to do that. What happens in the community when we have a place for our stories to be told? Well, you hear some stories that you never heard before. I give a voice to the voiceless. People who normally don't get a chance to get on radio and don't get a chance to get on TV. Young storytellers, tell the story. Don't fabricate anything. Just tell the truth and tell the stories and keep telling them over and over and over and over and over. Tell them till you can't tell them anymore. Get it embedded in someone's brain, and someone's head, that they can really retrieve that story. And you gotta tell it. We need to figure out how can we help those underserved people in our community who don't have the knowledge and don't have the information uh, to do it. And that's what Black Wall Street did. They gave it. They didn't tolerate nonsense and foolishness down there. You know, could you imagine what it would have been like today? 